All right, welcome back to MMA Al Dente. I did burn my lip. Let's just move on with it, all right? Uh, Dustin Jacoby versus Khalil Roundtree. It is Khalil, not Khalil, as I said for the first six years of his career here. But anyway, Khalil is, uh, both these guys are two of the best strikers in the division. These are killers on their feet. Dustin Jacoby, of course, is more proven out in the uh, real kickboxing circuit. He was 0-2 in the UFC in 2015, then went on to kickbox after a little stint in Bellator. And he fought the best of the best in kickboxing and did damn well in there. So he is one of the best strikers in the division, no doubt. Of course, the only time he's been knocked out was to Alex Pereira, who is, uh, you know, and that was at middleweight, but now he, he's a light heavyweight. But that just says a lot about Alex Pereira. But Dustin Jacoby, nobody's bested him on his feet since he's been an established kickboxer. Back when he fought David Branch, David Branch, I felt like, kind of got the better of him. Or, you know, he definitely, uh, you know, uh, outstruck Jacoby in round three anyway. Jacoby is, since coming back to the UFC, though, he's 6-0-1. He's got a lot of momentum. He just doesn't have a ranking because he hasn't beaten anybody too great, you know, which... I, course he's beaten a lot of good fighters but you know you have to beat someone close to the rankings to get ranked and of course I don't even know he might be ranked but I just don't think he is with his matchups and here he's fighting Khalil Roundtree who is one of the tougher matchups for him believe it or not I mean you could say it welcomes an easier fight because Roundtree is not going to grapple but Khalil Roundtree is a guy that uh I, I mean I feel like Jacoby could be playing into Roundtree strengths. You know, Khalil Roundtree's a guy who's lost on the ground. Both these guys, you know, a good portion of their losses anyway, are on the ground. And, you know, uh, Khalil Roundtree is an explosive striker. We've seen him fight established kickboxers and do very well against Gokan Saki and uh, Carl Roberson. Not that I put them in the same league, but still, those are two guys with, you know, kickboxing experience. Of course, Gokan Saki's a worldly kickboxer. He's been around for a long time, and that's probably half the reason why he got knocked out. By the way, a minute before that fight, and I can verify this, I said Roundtree via standing knockout. Whatever. I also called Cub Swanson over uh, Jonathan Martinez, so take it for what it's worth. But anyway, Jacoby versus Roundtree, I think this is going to be a striking battle. I would love to see them grapple just to see you know, one of these guys use their weaker arts, their weaker skill set to uh, capitalize on his opponent's weaker skill set. That would be awesome. And I do think it would be Jacoby that would thrive in a grappling battle just with this size, even up against, you know, against the cage and the clinch. And of course, Roundtree suffered a big knockout in the clinch with those uh, elbows from Johnny Walker. And Jacoby is a pretty damn big guy, kind of like Walker, but, you know, halfway there anyway. But still a bigger light heavyweight, and um, it'd be interesting to see them grapple. I would love to see it. But between the two of them, they have one submission victory out of whatever, 40 fights or whatever. One submission victory. So you're not likely to see it. Of course, that does come to Jacoby, and I don't even know what it was. I never saw it. Could have been submission due to strikes for all I know. But I just knew, okay, not likely to see that. But... Still, it would be interesting because these guys, that's where they don't want to be, and that's where the majority of their losses have occurred. Uh, Dustin Jacoby, his losses to John Salter, of course, King Mo, David Branch, you know, a good portion of that was uh, on the ground. Chris Camozzi, Clifford Starks, and Khalil Roundtree, pretty much everyone but uh, Johnny Walker, I'd say, uh, beat him uh, with grappling. You know, he's still... Uh, not that either one of these guys can't be outstruck, especially Roundtree. I do think Jacoby has the technical advantage here. But Khalil Roundtree is dangerous. And as we've seen again against two uh, good kickboxers, really good kickboxers, he's got two knockouts against them. He is, you know, he typically wins the striking battle. Of course, Jacoby is damn near undefeated in MMA, striking-wise. So... I tend to side with Jacoby in this one. I do think if a grappling bat of a striking battle plays out like I expect it to, Jacoby not only does he have the reach, the height, and the technical advantages, I think he's um, more likely to win a close fight. I look at Khalil Roundtree, and I don't think he's ever really won a close fight. You know that one against Pracnio was damn close; that slipped away, and then his fights with uh, Andrew Sanchez. Uh, 
whoever the hell else. Michelle o Oaksaychuk, even though that was a, ruled a no contest afterwards because Michelle popped for whatever the fuck. But Khalil Roundtree doesn't typically win those close fights. Jacoby does. Even though Jacoby's had some really close ones and some guys really press him, like uh, John Alon and uh, whoever the hell, Maxim Grishin. But he's won. He's, you know, on a six seven fight undefeated streak inside the UFC and he's had a lot of really close fights and he typically prevails. I like Jacoby better in round three and I do think uh, he's got an advantage pretty much everywhere. I just think uh, I could be wrong about that because Khalil Roundtree, his one distinct advantage is power and I mean leg kicks as well. That's going to be a big part of this. I would think Jacoby is aware of the kicking game of Roundtree and knows how to play it safe, circling out, and checking when he's coming in. I think, you know, that should be his top priority coming into this fight. And I think, uh, overall, I just favor Jacoby. I think it's, uh, you know, if I had to say this matchup favors one of them over the other, because it is favorable for both out of all the opponents out there in the light heavyweight pool, but it favors Jacoby more. He's getting a guy that's a little shorter than him, and uh, he's insistent on striking, so... Dustin Jacoby, I'm not going to play anything, any prop, because I can't trust uh, too many props in this one. I, I will play, I guess, Roundtree via KO, uh, but even then, I couldn't pick a round. I'm one and two. He's got mo all of his knockouts via round one, aside from his last two, and uh, those are against Carl Roberson and Modestus Bukowskis, but uh, still, Roundtree sprinkles something on the KO, and then Justin to Dustin Jacoby money line minus one seventy. That's been my play from the beginning. Got it around minus one sixty. Uh, I don't know where it is now, but minus one seventy, minus one sixty. Dustin Jacoby, and I'm not playing it too big because again, this is a very tricky matchup. All right, thanks for tuning in. Like, share, subscribe, all that horseshit, and check out my other videos.